What's up everyone, we are back with the final type of the Nat deck, which is going to be Mono Fighting. So Fighting's a type, I, I've always quite liked the design of it, uh, since I started playing Generation 1, I thought it was pretty cool. And I like the general playstyle of being like quite aggressive and just doing like huge damage at, at all costs, so it's definitely a very fun type. Is it good? Mm, I think Generation 8 has been a bit harsh to it, especially with how good Mono Flying has become. Uh, it's become a very prevalent type at the moment. Fairy is still quite good, and I'd argue Psychic is quite good in the Nat decks too. That said, it definitely has got some good tools in the Nat decks. We have uh, Mega Gallade, Zeke Mo'o, which is not on the team uh, for reasons. Um, so with that, this team was passed on to me by my friend Robbie Man. so huge shoutouts to him. Of course, uh, it's not the exact team, I have to be different for some reason, and I decided to use a Hitmon top instead of a Komo'o. So if you do like mono fighting, uh, be like Breloom and smash that like button, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, and with that, let's jump into the team. So, so first off, we have Gallade, and it's going to be a pretty standard Gallade. It's going to be max speed, max attack, jolly nature. So its speed stat hits 350, which is uh, quite a nice number. It outspeeds a lot of threats that aren't choice carved, which is very good. And on top of that, it has monstrously high attack with base 165. Of course, it also has Swords Dance to boost that attack to scary high levels, and that can actually give us uh, surprisingly good longevity. Its special defense is not bad with 267, though its HP is a little lackluster. Uh, Drain Punch does allow us to recover quite a lot of HP and just have very good longevity against anything weak to fighting. We also have Shadow Sneak, which is good priority, and we will see the team has a lot of priority, which is nice to pick off things that are like Focus Sash, for example, or perhaps Sturdy uh, in the end game. It's nice to do that. Also, it's just generally good against Ghost types and Psychic types, which can give the um, team quite a bit of trouble. We also have Knock Off, which is good team support. Again, I always say it's not as good in the Nat decks, I feel, uh, due to the abundance of Mega Crystals, uh, Mega Stones, and Z Crystals. Even still, uh, Base 65 Dark Attack is still quite nice against, again, Psychic and um, Ghost types, which give my team a lot of trouble. We are also actually part Psychic, which is very good because I will take neutral damage to Psychic attacks. And generally speaking, most Psychic Pokemon are especially offensive, so its special defense will actually go quite a long way. Finally, we have Inner Focus, which uh, blocks uh, flinching, and I believe it also blocks Intimidate this generation, which is very, very good because Gallade uh, can be even harder to stop. Next up, we have Terrakion. Uh, Choice Scarf Terrakion is going to be my main form of speed control in the team because the team uh, relies a lot on priority to outspeed, so having that immediate sense of speed on Terrakion is quite nice. Again, with no adamant nature, with max attack, it's still very strong on 357 attack. Which is even nicer is its rock and fighting stab are quite strong and this thing can deal a lot of damage very fast unfortunately its ability justified is mostly useless we won't see too many dark attacks being used against the team so unfortunately uh, we won't see this plus one attack very often moveset wise we have iron head which is good for fairy types um it's very important to be able to outspeed those fairy types and ko them because other than that cobalion is my main answer which isn't necessarily the best as it's not that specially defensive Close Combat is a great spellable move with 120 base stab. This thing can absolutely tear through so many teams, especially those that are weak to fighting. Uh, nothing really wants to take a stab Close Combat from Terrakion unless it's an immunity or possibly like a 4 by resist. Unfortunately, it does lower my defense and special defense a stage, but that's not too bad. Generally speaking, we only want Terrakion in against things that it's going to outspeed anyway. Next up is Stone Edge. Again, Stone Edge is quite a powerful uh, stab attack, 100 base with high critical hit ratio. This can absolutely tear through flying teams and fire teams. Uh, flying teams especially are very, very tough for my team, so having that stab Stone Edge is very good. Unfortunately, it is infamously unreliable, as many Pokemon players know, only 80% accurate. However, in uh, testing, this never missed. I hit it like... 16 turns in a row which is just incredible i don't want to jinx it by saying that so i'm worried now i'm going to get absolutely terrible stone edge miss uh, stone edge lux and finally we have earthquake and earthquake is just generally nice for again kind of hitting fire types uh hitting poison types especially is a big one because uh, poison does resist my fighting stab and can be kind of a tough matchup honestly especially with such a powerful regen core uh poison is generally quite tough so uh, earthquake is very nice for the so next up we have Breloom, and Breloom is going to be a max attack, animate nature, max speed Breloom. Um, when I was past this team, it was originally a jolly nature, 
personally i like adamant because we have things like rock tomb for speed control as well as we don't have a boosting move like swords dance so i like to maximize breloom's damage output uh, item wise we have focus sash which is very good the team is quite offensive in nature so it's nice for breloom to be able to guarantee live a hit especially after hazards are removed and potentially revenge ko things or even spore big threats its hp isn't that good at base 60 and its defenses are pretty paltry so Honestly, I wouldn't even bother recommending investing max speed because I don't think this is going to live much anyway. Moveset wise, we have Spore. Uh, Spore is a fantastic move. It guarantees a sleep on most opponents, um, which is super good for the team as it allows me to open up a lot of my offensive presence. On top of that, it can also be a great revenge KO. We have Bullet Seed, which is just not the most reliable stab, but it's quite strong, especially because it is technician boosted, boosting by 1.5 times power, and it is stab, as I said. It only hits 2 to 5 times, so it can be unreliable, maybe we need to hit 4 times, and it only hits twice, for example, but either way, especially after a spore, uh, not much Pokemon are going to like Bullet Seed. It also absolutely tears through the water matchup, which is quite good, because that is a very formidable type in the Nat decks. Next up we have Mac Punch, and Mac Punch might look quite weak at 40 base, but it's actually Technician and Stab boosted, so it hits I believe 90 base, which is super good because it is also priority, and that can tear through a lot of weaker teams, especially after some entry hazard damage, or just generally um, Pokemon who have been weakened from the battle. Next up we have Rock Tomb, and Rock Tomb is again very good against the flying matchup, good against bugs for example, and most importantly it guarantees lowers my opponent's speed, which opens up a lot of options to Breloom. I can potentially spore them, if they're a big threat I can potentially KO them again with a second Rock Tomb or maybe a Bullet Seed or Mach Punch, or generally just uh, hit flying types which is uh, super super important for the team, so overall Breloom is definitely an integral member of the team. Next up we have Keldeo, and Keldeo is going to be a Timid Nature with Max Special Attack. So Keldeo is my only special attacker on the party, uh, it is super important I keep the thing alive against physically bulky teams because my team uh, can have a bit of trouble with them, even after like Swords Dance Galade and stuff, uh, they are quite hard to take down. So moveset wise we have Icy Wind, which is again much like Breloom's uh, Rock Tomb, good for hitting flying types as well as lowering my opponent's speed potentially opening up to a second hit. Icy Wind also hits Dragon super effectively which is quite good because Dragon again kind of prevalent in the nat decks so it's nice to be able to hit those. Next up we have Hidden Power Electric and Hidden Power Electric might seem kind of a strange hidden power to run over things like fire or grass or or the usual suspects. The main reason I like Hidden Power Electric and um, this was sent to me by Robbie again as I said earlier is because it hits water and flying types, and more so water flying types. What comes to mind is Pelipper. So if Pelipper wants to set the rain against Keldeo, Hidden Power Electric absolutely drops it, which is super good because that limits my opponent's rain turns, potentially giving my team the upper hand. It also hits things like um, uh, Skarmory, Corviknight super effectively, which is kind of good, especially if my opponent has something like Mantine in their team, which means I can't spam Hydro Pump. Next up we have Secret Sword, and Secret Sword does hit defense rather than special defense, which is slightly counterintuitive to what I just talked about, having a physically, uh, specially offensive Pokemon on the team. However, it is very good for hitting things that are especially defensive or Assault Vest users, like maybe Chansey, uh, Blissey, Gudra, a lot of Assault Vest users. Uh, Secret Sword can catch them off guard and do a lot of damage. And finally we have Hydro Pump. So Hydro Pump is that bit more unreliable than say uh, Surf, but it also is that bit more powerful. And because we are choice picks, we want to maximize the damage output that we can do, so Hydro Pump is a generally very strong stab and hits things very, very tough. So next up we have Cobalion, and Cobalion is going to be a fast supportive Pokemon. With a max speed jolly nature and max HP, this thing's speed stat is pretty decent, but it also has very nice HP and also importantly very nice defense. Its special defense is a little lacking, but thanks to its seal typing, it does resist a plethora of types, which is very good for my team because other than that, it's not the most defensive in nature. It is actually the only leftovers we have on the party, kind of surprisingly, because it's usually a go-to item, uh, but this team is definitely more offensive in nature. So moveset-wise, we have Stealth Rock, which is very good for uh, chipping away Sashes and Sturdy, and generally um, hurting flying types from swapping out too much. Very important for the team, as we want to try and maximize our damage output and KO things in one turn, and Sashes and Sturdy really get in the way of that. T-Wave is also very useful as a form of speed control. Besides uh, Breloom Spore, we do not have any other status effects on the team, So, and there is Sleep Claws for Spore, so T-Wave is very generally very nice for uh, slowing my opponents down quite a bit. 
We have Torn to potentially shut down my opponent's entry hazards. Not the worst case if they get them, because we do have Rapid Spin and Hitmon Top to deal with those. But I often say prevention is better than cure, so preventing the entry hazards at all is quite nice. It can also prevent things like Calm Mind Setup or maybe Will O Wisp Spam, which my team really, really hates. And finally, we have Iron Head. Iron Head is generally just decent enough stab. Uh, it hits Fairy type super effectively, which is the most important thing. Thanks for Steel Typing, it also takes neutral damage from fairies, so Cabalion is an integral member to the party. Iron Head can also potentially flinch, especially after some T waves, which can lead to some absolute RNG nonsense, so let's hope that happens. And last but not least, as I said earlier, because I have to be different, I decided to use Hitmon Top. Originally in the party, this was a Zekomo'o. If you want to see how to use Zekomo'o, you can check out my Dragon video. I've used it there a few times, I believe. Um, but let's talk about Hitmon Top. So I decided to go for a Hitmon Top with Assault first because I thought this thing has really good special defense naturally. Its HP is definitely lackluster and attack is mediocre, but I thought it could be very fun, especially spamming Technician, because this thing has so many moves to access the Technician. So with Assault Vest, the thing is surprisingly bulky and can often take a, a special and oftentimes super effective hit, uh, generally one, but even still that's quite good and can potentially revenge KO. Moveset wise we have Rapid Spin and this thing is... Honestly, a lot better than it used to be. With base 50, boosted to 75 thanks to Technician, it will remove all entry hazards from my team, especially helpful for things like Breloom, as well as gaining a one stage in speed for Hitmon Top, allowing it to potentially outspeed some uh, key threats. Next up we have Triple Axle, and Triple Axle is actually boosted by Technician, I believe, every hit. Because it doubles in power every time it goes 20, 40, 60, I believe it goes 30, 60, 90, which is a lot stronger. Again, Triple Axel can tear through things like uh, Sashes and Sturdy, Dragons, and especially the Flying Types. You've heard me say Flying Types so much. That's because it is a very, very tough matchup and very dangerous matchup to look out for. So Triple Axel being able to tear through Flying Types is quite nice. We have Mach Punch. Again, like Breloom, boosted by Stab and Technicians. So I believe it is 90 base, which is generally very good. Its attack stat is not as high as Breloom's, but Mach Punch is still good to pick off weakened foes. And finally, a Bullet Punch, which is going to be 60 base thanks to Technician, and is going to be super effective on Fairies, so especially in the late game when a lot of the Fairies are weakened, maybe I only have Breloom left, I can Bullet Punch my way to victory. So that is going to be the team for today. So with that, before we jump into some games, I want to ask you, what is your favourite fighting type Pokemon? For me, I think it has to be Heracross. I'm just a big Heracross fan, I think its design is very cool. I like both its Mega Form and its regular form. Unfortunately, I didn't find a use for it on this team currently, but overall, definitely a very fun Pokemon to use and just generally really like its design. So with that, let's jump into some game. Okay, so our very first game is against the number two on the ladder with Mono Psychic, so this is going to be a very, very tough game, but I'm looking forward to trying it. Uh, Gallade is definitely quite powerful here. I like Technish, I like Focus Sash on Breloom. I guess Cobalion has some role as well as Hitmon Top against certain Pokemon, so it's kind of obvious to open up Hitmon Cobalion. I'm going to open Hitmon Top, assuming they go Deoxys Speed, which they do. Now, if they don't Psycho Boost me, I actually might be able to kill Triple Axel. They just Psycho Boosted me, and we lived. That's kind of crazy. We don't KO, unfortunately. Part of me wants to Rapid Spin. I feel like Slowbro comes in. You know, I'm certain Slowbro is going to come in. Let's go into Breloom here. Oh, they end up stealth rocking. Okay, we can still take this. Uh, Mach Punch should finish them off. I know it's not very effective. Great play. I'm going to Lele there. And I'm not going to be able to remove these stealth rocks. We're just going to Spore here. Sporing something is still quite useful for me. Into a Bullet Seed. Now, this is probably Z Celebrate Victini, so we're going to Rock Tomb. Oh, they're uh, Wisp. That's really interesting. Okay. Unfortunately, Lele is very good, and it's going to block my Psychic Terrain on... Sorry, I'm going to block my uh, Priority on Glade, my Shadow Sneak, which is not good for me. Not ideal. <laughs> Far from it. So unfortunately, I think Breloom goes down here. I could save it, actually, potentially, to uh, Spore the Slowbro. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take in Hitmontop and Sackus. 
I don't see a position where I was able to rapid spin away these rocks anyway. And my focus sash on Braylon was broken, so it's not too important. They go for a Moonblast. I'll take in Cobalion. I still think I value a T-Wave here. The only thing I don't particularly value it on is Slowbro, but even then it's not the end of the world getting it on Slowbro. We will... we'll start the rock. I don't particularly mind if I was uh, Will-O-Wisp there. Don't particularly like being uh, paralyzed, not gonna lie. But it's fine, we, we can make do. Okay, so... Tapu Lele is a threat. We do have Iron Hit Terrakion. Of course, that assumes we manage to weaken the Slowbro enough first. Hmm. What's the play here? They're probably going to sack Victini. I think it's seen its use this game. I guess I take in Breloom. Because that doesn't allow them to take in Slowbro. I feel like Galate can take care of Slowbro. Okay, they actually take in Slowbro. So I should, in theory, be able to get a free Spore here. Unless they go into Victini, but I still outspeed Victini. And we can Rock Tomb. It just misses out in the KO, sadly. Thanks to the burn. I'm willing to do this over and over again. Assuming I don't miss Rock Tomb, it should be okay. Okay, we still get rid of Victini. They definitely did some chip on us, thanks to Burn, so they played around that very well. Either way, we have to make do with this. So I... Mm, do I value Keldeo at all in this game? Honestly, I don't think I do. I think we sack Keldeo here. To Moonblast. We take in Tarak, which is going to threaten an Iron Head. I want to double here into into Loom. I'm going to do it on their Slowbro, potentially coming in. If they stay in, then Psychic, very good play. But I definitely value a Spore on something. I'll take it on Meloetta. Yeah, that's fine. The end game is still very difficult for me. There's no denying that. We'll take in Gallade here. Oh, interesting. That is crazy. I was not expecting this. Now, unfortunately, we have to win a, a speed tie, which is not ideal. And we don't win the speed tie, so that's unfortunately going to be game. If I manage to knock off Latios, if I could play around very well around the Tapu Lele, I think Tarakion might have been able to win. It would have been difficult. But not impossible. So unfortunately, there is no way I can break Slowbro. Even if I flinch it a bunch, it just iron heads. Or just uh, regenerates infinitely. GG. Very well played by my opponent. Uh, Terry, very tough matchup, but very, very interesting one. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. Okay, so we have a game here against Mono Normal. On paper, it's a pretty easy matchup. But they do have three huge threats to my team. Uh, Swellow, Staraptor, and Indeedee. So... It's definitely not going to be the easiest matchup. I think I'm going to open up a Keldeo, assuming they're going to open up with a... Uh, I kind of thought Lapani, but this is fine too. We can scout here as their Choice Scarf, so I'll Hydro Pump if they are. Uh, Cobalion is a good shout, or Terrakion. If they're not, a Specs Hydro Pump should KO. Nice. So that is a relatively big threat taken care of. And if they are a Psychic Surge on Indeedee, it actually blocks their own Fake Outs and uh, Digger's Bee's Quick Attack, so that is pretty good for me. I mean, I feel we just pump again. That looks to be a Salt Fest based on the damage it's doing. No problem, we'll pump one more time. They can Shadow Sneak or potentially Sucker Punch, it shouldn't KO me. And Keldeo is already putting in a good bit of work. So now here, we can uh, actually scout for their item. So they are indeed Choice Scarf. The question is, do I take in Cobalion? I think I take in Cobalion and T-Wave this. It means 
pretty much anything else should be able to Oko, especially um, Lark of Galade. Ooh, they go into Lapani and he's Limber. Very good play, actually. Very good play on my opponent's part. Do I value Kabalyan alive? Hmm. I guess not really. We'll get Stealth Rocks. I think we live a high jump kick, just about. This thing is very bulky. I probably should have T-waved there, actually, on the Mega Evolve. Would have been the better play, but here I can get into Rakion and just click Close Combat. They have no priority that can stop me right now, and uh, it pretty much gets a KO. Swellow could be a threat. If it's like Scrappy Boom Burst, perhaps. Um, I'm not sure if it gets any decent flying moves. I'm sure it has at least one or two. On the special side, maybe Hurricane, maybe Air Slash, but either way, Terrakion should be able to live those. I don't think you actually live this. Swellow's defense is pretty pitiful. It being an early root bird. Diggers B. Uh, quick attack here. It won't KO. I really underestimate how good uh, Choice Scarf Terrak is on fighting. It's, it's definitely a very important tool. GG. So with that, we're going to pause here and we'll be right back. So we have a game here against Mono Fire. Um, in this game, I do really value things like Terrakion, uh, Keldeo, Gallade can be pretty good too. Now, unfortunately, Breloom and Cobalion don't have the most use, but we're going to open up, I think, with uh, Keldeo. Now, I'm pretty sure Specs Hydro Pump KOs this, even in the rain, in the sun, sorry. It absolutely would in the rain. Perfect. So that removes their um, Rapid Spinner from the team. I guess they could technically be Defog and Moltres. It's not impossible. Uh, but removing that is quite good. Now the question is, what Zard is this? Honestly, I feel like I pump anyway. It's going to do a decent chunk of damage. That did a lot of damage. And it should put it in range, I believe, of Hitmontop. I feel like Hitmontop doesn't have the most use in this game outside of that. Uh, we are kind of worried about Z Celebrate, Victi Z Celebrate Victini. However, Shadow Sneak, Choice Scarf, Stone Edge, we have Rock Tomb on Braille, and we do have plenty of answers for it. So what I'm going to do here is... I think we're going to sack Cobalion. Actually, no. I'm going to Iron Head. Do I still have the rock here? Iron Head KOs. Okay, they go into Moltres. Interesting. Unfortunately, they do get the Flame Body, but I'm going to go straight here and uh, Stealth Rock. That potentially stops uh, Charizard coming in again. Burn Up is really cool. I don't see Burn Up too often. Um, okay. I guess on Burn Up, I could take a hit on top. It is Flame Body. So I don't necessarily want a triple axle. So I'm going to go Taraki on here. Uh, click Stone Edge. Nothing on their team particularly likes swapping into Stone Edge. And if they're, if this is their defogger, it puts them in a bad position. Okay. They go into Heatran. Unfortunately, we miss. I guess we go Hitmon top here. It doesn't have, as I said, too much of a role in this game otherwise. Fire Spin. Why not Magma Storm? We'll Mach Puncher. I'm, I mean, I'm just quite happy to chip this, if needs be. That did a lot more than just chip. Okay, they seem to be like a, a Protect Fire Spin stall set. That's okay with me. As long as I can break their Substitute. Anything else my team can easily cleave through it. Now, part of me wants to swap out on Protect. It's fine, because uh, two, two Toxics don't KO. So either way, something's eating a Mac Punch here. And this puts it out of range of um, Substitute. If they Defog, great play. We'll try to get a Triple Axle off. Just for a small bit of damage. Great play on my opponent's part. 
Triple Axel does decent damage. I don't necessarily want to risk a Lade getting burnt. So I think Tarak is the play here and we Stone Edge again. I don't think he tried eats it. It definitely doesn't need two. The question is, do we want to risk getting toxic? Nice. That is Moltres taken care of. I guess, in theory, Victini is still kind of a threat. The Dickens are... If this doesn't miss... I feel like Breloom can even win the endgame. Nice. I don't want to jinx it right now, but, okay, I was going to say this Tarakion has not missed any Stone Edges yet, and literally, as I said that, it decides to miss a Stone Edge, so I knew what I was getting myself into as soon as I said those words. Okay, this endgame is actually a little bit difficult. Hmm. Shadow Sneak is not going to KO, so I think we have to go into Breloom here. And Rock Tomb. It depends if this is Choice Scarf, Darmanitan or not. Ugh, it burns, that sucks. That's really bad, because I really wanted the, um, the extra chip on the Darmanitan. That's really bad for me. I guess we could still potentially have this Dramanton hit. And their Choice Scarf flared, but it's GG. Ah, that's really, really unfortunate that we got the burn. I mean, I guess it didn't make too much of a difference because Mac Punch wouldn't have KO'd the Dramanton in the end. And I knew I just had to go ahead and jinx the Stone Edge miss up here. I, I should not have mentioned anything. That was completely my own fault. I willed that into existence. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have another game against Mono Psychic. This game, uh, as we found out last time, is pretty difficult. I think we open up Hitmontop. Again, as they open up Deoxys, we can potentially get a triple axle off here. Assuming they don't want to absolutely obliterate me with like a psycho boost. Okay, again, we live quite nicely. Honestly, I've never seen uh, Psycho Boost been used until now. I feel like Slowbro comes in. Actually, no, they're gonna go for a Stealth Rock here, so let's Rapid Spin. Get that nice bit of chip. And then finish it off with a Mac Punch. Actually, Bullet Punch is, uh, I guess, slightly better. It hits Gardevoir. Super effectively. Which is, like, the only difference it makes, really. Tapu Lele comes in. We'll triple Axel again. On Lele, I think we go Cobalion and uh, set up a T-Wave here. If it's Choice Scarf, I think we live one. If it's Choice Specs, we outspeed and get the T-Wave, which is pretty nice for my team. I'm kind of worried about Slowbro, but I guess if we set up enough Swords Dances with Gallade in the endgame, it's definitely winnable. And uh, Breloom is actually also quite good here. Okay. They give me T Wave and Victini. We take those. And I'm going to Stealth Rock here. It's Z Celebrate, which isn't great, but we do outspeed it. That does nothing. If we can, like, parahax it to, like, 75%. I think Terrakion can KO with Stone Edge. Oh my god, we can actually do this. <laughs> this is crazy. I was I was kind of joking. You can calm down now, Cobalion. Thank you. I mean, with that kind of luck, Stone Edge is bound to miss. Oh my god, Stone Edge hits. I feel I feel wrong. Like I don't deserve that luck. On slow, bro. We go Caldeo. We eat Surf nicely, or Scald nicely. Iron Defense. Yikes. I can't even imagine Hidden Power Electric is going to do too much. I take that back. Hidden Power Electric did a lot of damage. And this potentially forces it out. 
Okay. That's pretty good. Meloetta is scary. But I'm willing to sack my my Keldeo here. Because Lele and Gardevoir can go down nicely to um, Iron Head. On my Tarak. Perfect. So they removed their own resistance to fighting. So Mac Punch KOs here. And I can pretty much get a guaranteed spore off and whatever comes in. Lele, we'll spore this. I don't even think we need to. Iron Head would have KO'd and Bullet Seed potentially can too. But any extra damage on this is completely fine with me. Nice. So Iron Head on Terrakion should KO. If not, we can potentially uh, outlive until its Psychic Terrain goes away, and we can use Shadow Sneak on Gallade. GG. So we got very lucky there with the Power Hacks on um, Victini. I will not deny that, but we only needed a couple to get uh, Stone Edge in KO range. If not, as I said, we could have gone to Gallade earlier on and uh, Shadow Sneaked it into range. So with that, let's uh, pause and be right back. Okay, so we have another game against Mono Fire, and I'm starting to see a trend appearing here. Um, they do have Infernape and uh, Volcanion, Volcarona, sorry, this time, which are, are big threats to my team, so I have to watch out for those. Especially Volcarona, actually. It can be quite scary. It's going to make sure I get Terrakion in good time, or keep my Brilloom healthy. We'll go for Keldeo again, as they have an Zard. Now, we saw last time that Hydro Pump does not KO this, but that's okay. It puts it in a uh, range of something else KOing it. Which is pretty important because that's probably one of the biggest threats to my team. On this... Hmm. Part of me wants to say we're getting Gallade. Um, yeah, I think we're just getting Gallade here in knockoff. It also lets us Mega Evolve, which means we can potentially swap this in later in the game relatively easier. Though this does kind of invite in uh, Torkoal, unfortunately. To get its cheeky rocks down. If I can take care of their Torkoal, it's very good for me to be able to get my rocks down against them. And remove their spinner. Now, Terrakion is still insanely good. Especially if Cinderace chooses to Sucker Punch me, for example. It does not matter, because I actually get Justify boosted. Which will uh, make me even stronger in the end game. Now, mock punch from something like Infernape, that is a threat. I do have to watch out for that. Volcarona is. It's difficult to play around. Like, if it quiver dances in my face, I can go into uh, Terrakion and use plus one Stone Age to Revenge KO. Okay. They do indeed take in Torkoal. We're actually going to try and knock this. Heat Rock. Okay. That's decent to get rid of. Unfortunately, nothing on my team does too much damage. I'm going to get in Breloom and try Spore it while it rocks. It just goes free for Lava Plume. Okay. And the Burn. Ah, that's so bad for me. We, we really hate to see that. Because now I have to take in Tarak here and Stone Edge. It won't KO, I don't think. Torkoal's extremely bulky. And they can force me out with Yawn. Hmm. Let's get a hit on top here. If we can deny their rocks, it's not the end of the world for me. In fact, Cobalion definitely doesn't have too much of a role here. But getting my own rocks up is quite nice. And I definitely do not want Hitmon... I mean, do not want uh, Teraki on asleep. It's too important. So we spin here. I'm willing for this thing to be asleep. That does a lot of damage, all things considered. That did a lot. They could Psychic... Uh, it's pretty bad for me if they Psychic on my Terrakion. I still think I got Terrakion here, in case they Quiver Dance. Perfect. 
I can still not cheer. Uh, it misses. I hate. <laughs> I hate this. It literally never missed in training when I was practicing this team. That's why I got so high on the ladder. It uh, it did not miss. I think I hit like 15 stonages in a row, and it was unprecedented. So, of course, you know that was just simply too much. So now I have to miss all my stonages instead. I can knock here, but knowing my luck... Oh, wait, we actually just died to that. I was going to say, knowing my luck, we get flame-bodied anyway. That is very unfortunate. <laughs> I hate to see it happen like this. Perhaps I should have stayed on top and rapid spin twice again. But exactly, I knew a flame body was coming. Okay. GG to my opponent. That is a um, pretty unfortunate loss there. You do. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have a team uh, game here against Mono Ground, and this team looks very scary. I'm not going to lie, this team looks very, very scary. Um, Rune Regis is quite good to completely block my priority, or completely block my uh, fighting attacks and shenanigans like that. I do really value Triple Axel Hitmon Top. Uh, Bullet Seed, Breloom, and Hydro Pump Keldy are also really, really good. Hmm. I'm going to open Breloom. Try and get a Spore down turn one. If I can take care of this, it's actually pretty good for me. That's kind of one of the biggest threats to my team. But we can Bullet Seed this. We're probably going to need all five hits. Actually, four would just about KO. Okay, nice. This should KO now. And my Focus Sash is still intact, which is very good for me. We'll spore this again. Now, I think I actually value Breloom healthy. Let's go Keldeo here. I feel like I'm afford to pump. I feel like Garchomp doesn't um, live nicely enough. Of course, this is assuming this connects. Okay, nice. Now, they can easily get in their Excadrill here. Hmm. What do I not value in this game? Honestly, I feel like it's... I feel like I don't value Gallade. That's sack Gallade. To an Earthquake. Okay, perfect. So, I just needed to see what their intention was. My team is actually very Earthquake weak. So, Breloom is the play here. And we're going to Spore. Oh, they crit me. That's so bad. That's so bad for me. Because that puts me into uh, Focus Sash range with this hand. Let's hope they don't immediately wake up and we land a Hydro Pump here. Okay, nice. I still have Triple Axel on Hitmon Top, which is very good. I just pump again. I know it doesn't KO, but that's fine. Because Triple Axel should take care of uh, Gliscor and Landorus. But the question is, can I take care of this in the meantime? Hmm. Part of me thinks I actually value rocks here. In a weird kind of way. I think I value rocks here. Yeah, I do. And I value HP on my Hitmon top. So we're just going to go ahead here and click Close Combat. I actually feel like Hitmon top might lose. Depending on the, the Landorus set. We definitely live an attack from Landorus. But I feel like Gliscor will KO here. Oh yeah, we definitely lose. Unless for some reason it's only attacking moves like knockoff. GG. So unfortunately another loss there, and with that we're gonna pause and be right back. So we have a game here against Mono, Water, and I like to see someone put respect on Kingler. Uh, very cool Pokemon. 
Some people ask me if it's the inspiration for my name. It actually is not. It's a complete coincidence, but I am a big Kingler fan, so I have to say that. So in this game, I think I really value rocks with Cobalion. I also really value Breloom, and honestly, Terrakion is surprisingly good in the end game. Let's open Cobalion here. As we open Volcanion. Hmm. I think I'm okay just to get rocks here. If I force them to rapid spin with Blastoise, that's okay with me. Because here I get a Stone Edge. And nothing on their team particularly likes eating a Stone Edge. Oh my god, that survives. That's very surprising. Not to worry, the rocks does actually put a surprising amount of pressure on them. Uh, I can get Kaladin. And go for a knock. I presume it's Mega Gyarados, which means it's going to take 25% swappy in. Which I like. Uh, we're going to try go for a uh, Swords Dance here. So they might be like the uh, Perish Song Toxic Trap set. We'll knock. Yes, that's exactly what they are. Unfortunately, I don't think Drain Punch KOs. It does a lot, though. Presumably protect again here. I kind of want to go for another Swords Dance, but I'm not going to. I'll play it safe and go for Drain Punch. And now here we get a pretty free... A pretty free Drain Punch. This is Choice Scarf? Yes, it is. Good to know. Keldeo can click Hidden Power Electric here, and surprisingly, nothing on their team particularly likes eating that. I was kind of surprised how useful Hidden Power Electric was on this Mon. I mean, this is still going to take a lot of damage. It won't KO, but if they Shell Smash, it puts them in range of Mach Punch. Which is uh, A-OK -okay by me. And Skull doesn't even KO. Honestly, the Scald burn there is kind of nice for me. Because now I get in uh, Breloom for free. If they go into Gyarados, I Spore. If they go into Greninja, I Mach Punch. And that should KO. Nice. Now, just on the very rare off chance this is Substitute. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's Substitute, because if they sub once... Uh, bullet Seed next turn should break it, so we're going to Spore here. They're probably Mega, but they could be like Super Sonic, Super Sonic Sky Strike as well. That's a bit of a tongue twister there. Okay, they're Dragon Dance. That is kind of threatening, but Bullet Seed should KO here. GG. Breloom definitely coming in handy there. Um, after a pretty poor start as well, we definitely take those. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. Okay, so we have a game here against Mono Poison, which is a very, very tough matchup for me. One as well I haven't actually practiced, so I'm half excited to do this, half nervous. We definitely like rocks in this game, so I think I'm going to open up Cavalion. As they open up Salazzle, that is the one thing I didn't want to open. I love the name though, Argonian. I'm a big Elder Scrolls fan. So we'll go Keldeo here. Now on Keldeo, their answer is probably... It's probably Toxapex. Part of me wants to HP Electric here. It's kind of a, a crazy move. I'll Hydro Pump. Just because this thing is a big threat to my team. And as expected, they are Sash. Now what do I do with that information? I go into Terrakion. As we should live. We live at Stabs easily. And we get an Earthquake off here. As long as, again, my Focus Ash is intact on Breloom, I'm confident enough in this game. We go Keldeo here. They T-Spikes. But we can HP Electric. It does, you know, surprisingly good damage. Now, unfortunately, something coming in is going to get Toxic, but we'll HP Electric again. We, we actually kind of like that knockoff. 
I'm not gonna lie. I'll pump once. It, it's a risky play. No, I have to HP Electric here. Or do I? I want to pump on potentially like Night Lego coming in, but I'm not willing to risk it. Getting rid of Pex is way too important for my team. Because Naya Ligo isn't that big a threat as long as my Tarak is healthy. It puts in a lot of work. Now, Scolipede is extremely scary. Is this Choice Scarf? I feel like it's Choice Scarf X, so we're going to take in Cobalion here. Uh, try and T-Wave. Oh no, that's so bad. Please land this T-Wave. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so bad for me because I'm pretty sure Gengar can can potentially sweep the rest of my team. We'll triple Axel. I don't think we died to Hex. Curse body. As long as we don't miss. Okay, nice. We, we take that just about. It's not ideal. But we'll take those. Hmm. Now, this end game is so scary because of Scolipede. We'll bullet punch here just to put it in range. Oh, we can bullet punch twice. Interesting. I kind of wanted to rapid spin there, but I, I wasn't brave enough. I'm not going to lie. Now, if this is protect Scolipede, that's bad for me. We definitely do not want this being protect Scolipede. We can Stone Edge. Okay, great. I think the end game is still very winnable. I'm not about to risk Taraki on missing Stone Edge again. We'll sack Breloom. Because Earthquake should win from this position. I feel like Mach Punch doesn't KO. Yeah, but that thing still has paper defenses. So Earthquake into Earthquake... Should KO. If it is like Focus Sash and Lego for some reason, we have to be a Glade and KO. So GG there to my opponent. That was a surprisingly tough game. Some very unfortunate T wave misses. Uh, but it's fine, it worked out in the end. I wanted to try and rapid spin away the, the toxic spikes, but I think it was more important that I got the chip that I did. And with that, let's pause and be right back. So we have a game here against Mono Dark. Now in theory, this should be a pretty easy matchup for fighting. However, Sableye is actually very, very terrifying for the team. So I definitely have to play carefully around that, especially if it's going to try and uh, spam Will-O-Wisp. I think with that in mind, we open up with Breloom. Or is the open with T-Tar? Does Mac Punch kill? I'm almost certain it does, but I'm going to try to get a, a Risky Spore off here. And the reason for that was just in case they want to swap into Breloom. Sporing that is, uh, sorry, swap into Sableye. Getting a Spore off on that is fantastic, because Mac Punch does otherwise uh, kind of tear through their team. I think Heldio is my best option against Sableye. Ooh, Citrus Berry. Oh god, sorry. But we still get the 5 hits, so it goes down. If Sableye comes in... It's risky, because I guess I could Bullet Seed it. If they go for... Okay, they go into... Um, Obstacoon. I'll Mach Punch here. So the reason I find a risky player against Sableye... If they Mega Evolve and I Spore, it bounces back. If they don't Mega Evolve and go for a Priority Will-O-Wisp... We can Spore them. So I think... All in all, the better play is to probably attempt to Wisp them. Or Sport them, sorry. Because Keldeo still should be pretty decent against them. Okay, Crook comes out. My team is quite weak to Earthquake. Which is uh, kind of nasty. Hmm. I think Kobalion's the play here. I don't necessarily mind losing this. To uh, Earthquake Crocodile. Because I can simply take in uh, Breloom afterwards here. 
Or do I... Do I live in Earthquake? Hmm. I still also have Hitmontop. So we take him Brainum here. And uh, we Mac Punch. It unfortunately just misses out on the KO, but we still live Earthquake quite nicely. Uh, both Bisharp and Greninja as well are going to take quite a lot, I believe, from Mac Punch. Well played. Thank you. So obviously the reason I didn't stay in earlier is I did not want to be um, minus two defense. I'm going to risk the sport here. Perfect. That is just what you want to see. So obviously this far from guarantees it, but it does let me potentially get in Keldeo and uh, start clicking Hydro Pump here. If they stay asleep for a few turns, I do think Keldeo can put in a lot of work. Oh no, they woke up. Oh, they're psychic. That's really interesting. Oh, of course, Pump misses what I did not do. That's fine. I think it's in range of um, Terrakion. Perfect. And that should open up Hitmon top in the end game just to click uh, Mach Punch a few times. Now, there is a small off chance. This is Focus Sash. Hmm. I think it's okay if it is. I think I'm more worried about Focus Sash um, Greninja, if anything. So we take in our choice scarf Traki on here, click close combat a bunch. I'm not too worried about Greninja. If they water Shuriken, Hitmon Top should easily live and can revenge KO. So I believe this should be game. I have two Mach Punchers and a Shadow Sneak left. Even if Breloom is burned, it's still going to do a decent chunk of damage because it is a Technician Stab super effective. Which they stack up uh, very, very fast. Yeah. Choice card for two? Uh, it's not only choice card I have, but GG. They definitely played well. I think the spore on the uh, Sableye was absolutely crucial in the mid game. If I didn't manage to spore that, Sableye could have run away with the game. So, with that, let's pause and be right back. So we have a game here against Mono Dragon, and hopefully this is the game where my Hitmontop shines through. Uh, this is the kind of reason I used the Pokemon itself. Uh, here, I do definitely value Hitmontop. I think Terrakion can be pretty good in the end game, And honestly, Icy Wind Keldeo is not bad either. We're going to open up Cabalion here, and try to get my rocks down as early as possible. I'm going to T-Wave you, just in case you try to like, dance in my face or something. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. I think I can afford to let them dance twice. And what we're going to do here is actually taunt them so they can't uh, get too fast and outspeed my party. That does a surprising amount of damage. I think I'm willing to sack Cabalion. I think. Because after this, I can get in uh, my Keldeo, which should do some decent damage. So Icy Wind should actually kind of threaten their team a lot. Now Altaria is a bit frightening, but Terrakion should be able to outspeed it and KO it. So let's take in Keldeo here. Please do not miss Icy Wind. I'm asking this very nicely, Keldeo. I can't be much nicer about it. So nothing on their team particularly would like to swap into Icy Wind. I guess um, Appleton could. Definitely not ideal for them. I'm going to Icy Wind again. They've confirmed to me now they're not weakness policy. It's definitely not going to KO. It's going to be way too weak. But it's still going to do some nice damage. And they missed Dual Wing Beat, which is uh, very, very, very good for us. Because that probably would have KO'd. Honestly, Keldeo has put in plenty of work right now. We can take a Draco. Because now we can get a hit on top, uh, click our triple axel, and again, nothing particularly wants to swap into this. Altaria is probably their best bet, but they end up giving me uh, some damage on Dragalge. Nice. Now is where things honestly get 
a little bit difficult for me. I think when I do a sack, Galade. I knew they couldn't afford to uh, Dragon Dance in my face. They couldn't afford to take another Triple Axel. And with this, I think we take in Tarak and just click Iron Head. Even if it doesn't KO, uh, Braylim should KO afterwards. Or we have Bullet Punch on Hitmontop. And I believe Hitmontop can take care of Hydragon and Appleton quite easily. They go for Dance. That's okay. We still have speed. We know their choice scarf Hydragon. The question is, do I value keeping Taraki unhealthy? And I guess in a way, yes, I do to take care of Appleton. So we'll go Breloom here. Block their Leech Seeds. Um, what's stronger? They are equal strength, but Mac Punch won't miss. That's doing decent damage, honestly. They could be Recover, which isn't great for me. But as long as I can keep them somewhat low, I believe close combat should finish the game. Okay, they protect Leech Seed. It doesn't seem like they are Recover, which is pretty good for me. Oh, they are Recover. I spoke too soon. That's okay. Eventually, they're going to have to KO me. And then I can get in my Terrakion. The Terrakion might die to Apple Acid. It's okay. We can get in hit one top afterwards and click Triple Axel. Assuming Triple Axel doesn't want to be terrible and miss constantly, it should be able to KO Appleton. This is a bit troublesome. But I'm pretty confident in hit one top's ability to win the end game. It should also easily live Hydragon. Okay, perfect. I'm assuming Triple Axel should kill. I know they have Thick Fat, so it's only 2 by effective, but it's still super effective nonetheless. And it's Technician boosted. Of course, it could miss a ton of times. That is very much possible. Okay, that's doing a ton of damage. Of course it misses. Why wouldn't it miss? So I think we Rapid Spin here. They're going to protect the first turn. It's going to do 20, 40, and like 40 against. Oh my god. Really? Oh, we need a triple axle not to miss, please. One, two, three. Perfect. Was that so hard to hit him on top? And Hydrogon shouldn't be an issue. We click Mag Punch. Probably won't KO, but Terrakion should live nicely. That did very little damage. We Mac Punch again for game. GG. So, unfortunately, Triple Axel was not cooperating with me there at all, but we managed to win uh, in the end anyway. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So, we have a game here against Mono Dark, and honestly, this is a very, very threatening looking Dark team. Sableye, Mandibuzz, and Makalolan all are very big threats to my team. Hmm. So, with that, we're going to have to play this one pretty carefully. I'm going to try opening Glade. As they open up Sable immediately. They might go and try Burn Me here. So what we're going to do is go into Keldeo. This thing is such a big threat. If it manages to burn me. It's really, really bad. Alternatively, I could try Swords Dance. No, I think I go Keldeo first. And try force some damage off on this. Exactly. What I expected to happen. So we'll just drop a Hydro Pump here. Nothing particularly likes eating Hydro Pump. I mean, I know Greninja, uh, Alolan Mach, and Umbreon could take them, but not terribly well. Yeah, that did 50%. That's pretty strong. They get their Aya Papa. Hmm. We'll go Mach here. I'm sorry, Cobalion here. I want to try and T-Wave. I expected, yeah, them to go into their Sableye here. I guess that's not terrible because now I can Iron Head for free. They can't snarl me if that's what they run because they will uh, boost me thanks to Justified. Okay, I'm willing to just Iron Head this a bunch. See what attack they run as they go into Greninja. I'll Rocks once. 
it's kind of risky, but I think I like limiting save life swap ins. As the U turn, perfect. Probably into save life again, okay. And unfortunately, we're not fully powered this turn when we kind of need it the most. Either way, we'll iron head still. They knocked me off, which isn't great because I now lose my leftovers. However, I am going to be doing more damage with Iron Head, which is quite good. And I am forcing them to lose some of their recover PP. This is fine, I think. If I don't get fully powered all the time, that is. Yeah, so forcing them into recover is very good, or just forcing their HP down in general to potentially open up Keldeo later is very good for my team. Will you stop being fully paralyzed for once in your life? Oh my god. Cabalion. What? Okay, that's quite a strong hit. That is extremely good for me. Part of me wants to risk triple axle here. I think I do. Let me check if it KOs. Hit him on top. Save light. Uh, Mega Sableye, Triple Axle does 43 to 51, so it's pretty nice. Of course, assuming it hits three times, what does Brailium do with Bullet Seed? Three times also KOs, does two times KO? Two hits. 33 to 39. The roll is very much in my favor. So I think I'm going to risk it. I think I have to risk it. I just need to keep Sableye weakened. Okay, they go into Mandibuzz. Good play. As that's not going to do too much. I can Rock Tomb here though. It does a decent chunk. Oh, they're Brave Bird. I'll be honest, I was not expecting that. At all. We'll take a hit on top here. And triple axle. Maybe I should have triple axles in the first place. Okay, it hits three times. I was very worried it survived the second hit there. That would have been very bad for me. So nothing can easily swap in on this. I can Mach Punch, hit on top, and Greninja. Uh, Mach, I can triple axle. I'm actually going to rapid spin you. Just to get rid of those rocks, which is pretty good for me. They gunk shot. We can go into Terrakion here. And click Earthquake. We are poisoned, unfortunately, which actually is good for me. Because now they can't override it with Burn and Sableye. Okay, they go Umbreon. Huh. Is it like Foul Play Umbreon? Let's try Keldeo. Oh, another wish pass. That's pretty bad for me. I kind of want a secret sword once. As Muck comes in. That does a hefty chunk. And here, I think we have to swap. Now's maybe the chance to set up Glade. Don't poison. Okay, nice. Do I Swords Dance once into Drain Punch? I think I just Drain Punch straight out. That is quite strong. And assuming they don't poison me, I'm honestly in a very good position here. Okay, so they go into Sableye. I don't think knockoff kills. I should have Swords Dance that turn. Gallade, Mega, knockoff, 21 to 25, absolutely not. Not even remotely. Let's go Keldeo on their recover. And we'll click pump again. Okay, nice. Muck goes down. And that's very good for me. I think... I think Sable is beatable. Tough, but beatable. A Tyranitar comes in. Hmm... I think I pump again. No, I missed. That's quite bad for me. 
Does pump kill Tyranitar? I'm really not sure, actually. Let's try uh, Mono Dark. Pump does not. Let's go hit him on top here. They might try to wave me again. They stealth rock. I'm going to triple axle in case they go into Sableye to block the spin. Perfect. That did pretty good damage. I'm pretty happy with that. And their Sandstorm chip is nice. Because I can triple axle here again. Please hit. Excellent. Okay. That is so incredibly good for the end game. It opens up Mach Punch here so much. And I'm pretty sure my Terrakion can break the rest of the team. Okay. Those triple axles hitting were, were absolutely crucial to this game. This was a very, very tough uh, Mono Dark team to fight. They end up forfeiting, it makes sense. I believe it on top wins in the end game. If not, Terrakion definitely does. GG, well played. So my opponent played that amazingly. That was a very, very tough Dark team to fight. And with that, let's pause and be right back. So that is going to be it from Mono fighting. Overall, as I expected from the type, there was a lot of ups and downs. Uh, in the type in general. Some good matchups, some bad. Um, I played well sometimes. I could have probably played better others, but that's just the nature uh, of the game, especially with a type I'm not that comfortable with. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how I did, and definitely, most importantly, I did enjoy it, and hopefully you did too. If you did, leaving a like, a comment, or subscribing, sharing this with a friend, all that kind of stuff. It seems simple, but it helps me out so much, and I truly, truly do appreciate it. It really goes a long way. So with that, the Natdex series has finally come to a close, which it feels strange. I mean, it's kind of all I've known for a long time now. I was really, really enjoying the Natdex, and I was really looking forward to getting them all done. But now that it's over, I'm not exactly sure what direction to take the channel. I have some ideas. Will I play BDSP Monos? Some people have asked. I don't know. Currently, I don't enjoy it. Um, so I probably won't do an entire series on that though i might do the odd episode let me know what you want to see for the channel next i do have some ideas as i said just have a lot of work to do editing those ideas as they are huge projects they are all voiced and stuff so hopefully that won't take too long and with that i hope i catch you next time everyone take care and have a great day